So I, I find it a bit sobering to consider the extent of the, uh, the unmet need in BC uh, for kids with autism with um, uh, mental health challenges. There's literally thousands of kids in BC who are not receiving the mental health uh, treatment and support that they need. And um, either because they're not referred or they're referred and they're not accepted for uh, services when they are referred or, they're, um, or there's simply no one to refer them to. Um, and this, this places a tremendous strain on families and it means that a lot of uh, children and, and youths are not um, um, achieving their potential in school or enjoying the quality of life that they deserve. And older teens and the young adults are, uh, uh, who are capable of succeeding in um, post-secondary education or in employment uh, often struggle to, to succeed, not because of their autism, but because of their mental health uh, difficulties. So it's a daunting uh, problem, but at the same time, it's encouraging to think about uh, the difference we could make if we address this problem and start to um, start to do something about it. So, um, you know, we know, as our presenters have uh, emphasized, that anxiety, depression, and uh, OCD and other mental health conditions are treatable conditions that can be successfully treated whether the person has autism or not. And um, the same methods apply, but it does help to have some specialized skills and knowledge to. Um, the diagnostic issues are a bit more complicated. Um, the treatment methods do have to be modified and adapted, taking into account the, the behavioral differences and the cognitive differences of autism. And I think uh, mental health professionals working in this area also have to work extra hard to collaborate um, with others, with families and with uh, the many, or not many, but the several disciplines that might be involved uh, in a young person's care. Um, you know, the number of uh, professionals in BC who have specific expertise in mental health difficulties in children with autism is actually quite small, and their, their services aren't very accessible um, or not easily accessed for various reasons, geography or cost or, or whatever. Um, but there are also a large number of people who do have skills that are relevant. So mental health therapists that, that are knowledgeable about, about uh, anxiety and depression and treatment methods, they may not know autism uh, particularly well or specialize in that, but they do have skills that, are, that can be used if they have appropriate supports and, uh, and resources. So, um, so how can we begin to address this, um, this problem? Well, I think... Um, I think, first of all, we need to recognize it's going to take steady work by a lot of people over a long period of time. It's not, we're not going to turn the corner quickly, but I think that uh, we've made uh, great progress in other areas of autism services in BC, and I think we can in this area as well. Um, one step is to develop greater awareness amongst families and uh, primary care uh, providers, and uh, these webinars are a step in that direction. Um, we need to create opportunities for professional development for people in the field, and um, and um, we. I think the most important thing is we need to develop networks of support, so that um, people who are newcomers or uh, uh, perhaps uncertain of their skills or or struggling a little bit with uh, particularly complicated. Um, uh, challenges with their patients, have access to colleagues that, with more experience that can support them, uh, colleagues within their own discipline, but also um, across disciplines. So, um, you know, a therapist who's tr uh, skilled in treating anxiety, for example, but new to autism, um, you know, can uh, draw on the, the expertise of others involved with the child that do have autism-specific uh, uh, skills, so speech-language pathologists, behavioral consultants, psychologists, and, uh, and others. And finally, I think it's really important that we uh, work with all communities in BC. In my work, I have the, the uh, privilege of meeting uh, families from a lot of small communities and, uh, and some remote communities. And it's important that we remember to include them in this process of trying to uh, resolve these problems uh, from the beginning and all along the way. Let's not just start in the bigger centers or the e easier to serve communities and work out from there. Let's include them from the beginning. Um, small communities do have extra challenges uh, with funding, access, recruiting professionals, retaining pr professionals, and so on. But they also have a lot of um, things that teach us in terms of uh, working cooperatively and creatively and making the most of, uh, 
every available resource.